It's that time of year again where YouTubers are coming out and sharing what they've earned this past year on AdSense. And don't worry, I'm nosy too. I literally click on every damn video. It's always so interesting comparing what everyone makes on AdSense, especially when you factor in how many subscribers they have. So I thought I'd add to the comparison chart and share how much I've earned on AdSense in 2021 with around 30,000 subscribers. I will also be sharing my top tips on how you can grow your channel in 2022. If you're unable to stick around for the whole video, I have time stamps in the description box as well as labels on the bottom of the video so you can kind of hop around but let's get into how much I made in 2021 on AdSense. So first I want to note that at the beginning of the year I started with 25,000 subscribers and by the middle I was kind of going towards 29, 30 and then I finally hit 32,000 in December. I have YouTube's Creator Studio pulled up in all of my analytics and it says that I've gained 6,400 subscribers in the past year. I want to take an in-depth look and go month by month and see what are my top earning videos of that month and what made me the most money. So starting off with January, I made $180, which isn't a lot because I feel like I remember the previous year making consistently around $300 every month. But for that month, my top two earning videos were how you can make money promoting your favorite Amazon products. That one gave me around $71. And then the next one, down is top places to live in Austin which also made me $71 and then there's a bunch of other videos that I probably won't mention because they made me like 20 bucks here five dollars here so I'm just gonna mention again the top two for February I made $447 this month's top two earning videos are the same videos but they actually switched the first top earning is the top places to live in Austin and that made me $67 and then the next one is the Amazon influencer program video which also made me $67 in my analytics, it shows me a graph and we're kind of on this incline right now. So in March, we have a jump and I made $683. This month had the same top earning videos. The Amazon one is first with $68 and then top places to live with $65. Still on that incline with April coming in at $1,064. The top earning videos finally switched. So the first one is my Skims haul, which made me $176. And then we have a video I made for the best graduation dresses of 2021. That made me $96. I also forgot to share the CPM. So in January, we started with $13. And in April right now, we're at about $18. For the month of May, I hit my peak. It comes in at $1,590. $96. That CPM is $16, which is a little bit lower even though the revenue is higher. The top earning videos for May are I did 12 free 30 for two months and these are the results and my Skims bra haul. And that 12 free 30 video made me $632 in this month alone and then the Skims bra haul was $135. In June, we start to drop but not by too much. My revenue for this month is $934 and the CPM is $17. The top earning videos for this month month are the same with my 12 free 30 video earning me $183 and then my skims haul earning me $59. Unfortunately we're still on the decline so for July I earned $643 with a CPM of $15 and then for my top earning videos for July we have the same two top earning videos so the 12 free 30 video made me $102 and then the skims bra made me $63. In August I made $635 with a CPM of $15. Top earning videos are the same. I have a feeling that the 12 free 30 video is definitely going to be my top earning for the year. In September, I made $804 with a CPM of $17. So it looks like my CPM is going up, which is good. For this month, we still have 12 free 30 at the top earning me $152. And then we have a new top earning video. And the title is this surgery will change my life earning me $56. We're going back up a little. In October, I made $129 with a CPM. PM of $17. Top earning videos for October, of course, 12 free 30 is up top, earning me $162. And the second one is why you should not move to Austin, pros and cons of living in Austin, which earned me $45. In November, I made $981 with a CPM of $19. Top earning videos were my 12 free 30 and my Orange Theory Fitness video. In December, I made $748 with a CPM of $18. This year, I did not participate in vlogs 
Vlogmas, but I have for the past couple of years. So I'm kind of curious to see the comparison of what I made in 2021 December versus 2020. So before that, let's go into my top earning videos, which is 12330 earning me $99 and my breast reduction recovery vlog, which earned me $57. I guess I did do a lot better this year because in December 2020, I made $585 doing Vlogmas. So the grand total comes out to be, drum roll please, $9,829. If I remember correctly, the previous year, I think I made around $4,000. So I pretty much doubled what I made this year on AdSense. Now I want to share some tips on how you can grow your channel in 2022. Even if you haven't started your channel yet, hopefully this will give you a little bit motivation to do so. All right, let's get the cliches over with. I know everyone says this in every tips video there is, but you have to be consistent on YouTube and honestly every platform because who wants to follow someone that maybe posts once every other month or even once every other week. So it's really important to stay consistent and I definitely recommend trying to create some kind of upload schedule. Only this year in 2022 have I just created an upload schedule. So I have my weekly vlogs going out every Sunday night. So subscribe if you guys love long vlogs and just aesthetic vlogs. And then on Wednesdays, I'm going to post kind of like an informational video. So those are going to be like my two main posting days. And then on Friday, if I have like an extra vlog or an extra maybe fashion haul or a beauty video, I would post that on Friday. Sometimes you kind of have to put yourself in the shoes of the viewer and kind of think, okay, how many times would I like to see myself posting? And maybe what days are those? And would I like a consistent upload schedule? Or do I not really care? Do I just want, you know, my favorite YouTuber to post whenever she wants? So it's kind of really up to what you like, but I really think that being consistent with an upload schedule is going to help you in the long run. I actually just took my own advice and did this next tip this morning. I went back into some older informational videos and kind of changed the title. So for that top places to move in Austin, it actually had the year 2020 on it. And I know if I saw that on my suggested page, if I'm looking up where to move in Austin, if I saw 2020, I would not click on it. So I updated it to 2020. 22 because that information is still very valuable and nothing's really changed except for some newer buildings that have popped up but I still stand by all the advice so I went in and tweaked the title and I also realized that there was no description on the video I'm like what was I doing back then I would literally just upload it with the title and the default description, no. Descriptions are so important. You have to be using keywords. If you don't know what SEO is, look it up and study it because I feel like this is definitely going to be a way to grow your channel. Um, and also you can put hashtags on the first line of your description box and that also sometimes helps the reach. I also wanted to add in, if you guys are creating vlogs, make sure that those titles are still kind of pulling those keywords. So for example, I think my last weekly vlog or two weekly vlogs ago, I said my first week of being self-employed as a 24 year old in Austin, Texas. So kind of just like that self-employed in Austin, Texas, I felt as though they were big keywords. And I think that video definitely did a lot better than vlogs that probably said like cooking at home, date night in, self-care day. Obviously your loyal subscribers are going to love anything that you put out, but I just recommend kind of plugging in those keywords when you can. When you do go back to those older videos, tweak the titles, tweak the descriptions, make sure your ad placements are in good spots and that you have enough ad placements. So for example, for my weekly vlogs, they're around 35 minutes. So I think I placed around five ads in them. But if you just let YouTube place ads, sometimes they will place only two ads in a 35 minute video and each ad can be making you X amount of dollars. So if you have more ads in a video, you will obviously be making more money but you have to make sure that you don't bombard your viewer with the ads because then the watch time is not going to be very high. And I think the way that YouTube kind of suggests your videos to other people that may not have already subscribed to you is looking at your watch time and making sure you know people are watching through a good duration of the video and not just exiting out two minutes in. It's almost like TikTok where you need your viewer to watch 
this much of your video out of this much of your video to make it on the For You page and to be able to keep getting pushed out. So long story short, go in and check your older videos, ads, and make sure that they're not annoying your viewer because you do want your watch time to go up, but that there are enough ads so that you are making a good amount of money from each video. My favorite thing to do is to set goals for myself and I know that social media is not all about the numbers but it does kind of help me to motivate myself to push out quality content. So currently my goal right now is to get to 35,000 subscribers by April 15th. I'm currently at like 32,000. So if you guys are liking this content, hit that subscribe button down below. It would mean the world to me. And I really think having a goal like this is going to get you in the right mindset to grow. My next tip is to look into getting some partnerships with brands. Even if it's gifted, I would recommend to ask them, you know, if I post the story with this product, can you repost it or just post my photo and tag me? or you know post a screen recording with my mention of this product in my YouTube video I think this is a really great way to get exposure and kind of get your name out there speaking of exposure you must cross promote your YouTube videos on all of your social media platforms I cannot stress this enough 2022 is the year that you stop giving a fuck about what Becky in high school thinks about you because you are going to post that video, you're gonna post that TikTok, you are gonna to start today if you haven't already. Even if it's a hate view, you're still making money from that. So in a way, if you think about it, they're kind of supporting you. <laughs> also, if you guys create and post vlogs on your YouTube channels, I've seen this a lot lately and I'm loving it where they'll post like mini aesthetic vlogs on TikTok and then in the description they'll say full vlog on YouTube and I feel like by now people know that everything's just linked in their TikTok bio or profile so people know to go and click on that link to find your YouTube channel so this is a really great way to cross promote. Lastly I wanted to answer a question that I feel like a lot of people have asked me within the past year and I'm very passionate about my answer um, so the question is should I start a YouTube channel to help my brand or help my personal brand and grow or anything like that and I say no no don't start a YouTube channel do not do it first of all it's a lot of time it's a lot of effort and just a lot to think about and I feel like TikTok is a platform that we all need to be taking advantage of because you can blow up overnight I've had a couple videos go viral and I've gained 55,000 followers in I want to say has it been two years now and that's insane to me because I posted my first YouTube video in 2013 and I'm only at 32,000 subscribers right now mind blown so it is actually insane how fast TikTok is growing as a platform and how fast you can grow especially if you are wanting to create vlogs as the kind of only type of video that you're gonna have on your YouTube channel, I definitely recommend to build a loyal following somewhere else and then redirect them to your YouTube channel because that way they're gonna be more interested in your life already. I just think it's harder to grow a channel, especially if you're doing vlogs and that's all you're posting because like I said, the titles, the SEO, it's just gonna be hard for people to find you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys use these tips to help grow your channel in 2022 and let me know if they work for you. Don't don't forget to subscribe down below. Like I said, I post on Sundays and Wednesdays and sometimes Fridays. And here's to doubling our AdSense income in 2022. We can do it. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.